Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the second installment of Scumbag Week. That is where myself, Styx, looks at the standard format, expanded format, and legacy formats and picks out three decks that I deem to be scumbaggy in one way or another, whether that is item lock, whether that is focusing on getting rid of energy, i.e. hammers, or whether that is some other form of keeping your opponent from playing the game. I will look at all three formats, pick out a deck that I deem scumbag worthy, and just roll with it. Now before I get into the deck, just a reminder that if you guys like this video or found it helpful, please leave a like, drop a comment, click that subscribe button, it helps us out a ton, and lets us do more cool stuff for you guys. And as for the question of the day, I'm going to go straight up generic and just let you know that all three of these questions of the day for Scumbag Week are going to be the same in different variations. This one is what is the deck that either you guys hate facing the most in the standard format or you guys deem the most scumbaggy to use in the standard format. Now if you had to ask me, honestly, like I'm kind of actually really happy with where the meta is right now. There's not any... Well, I, there is disruption. There is always going to be disruption. Like, that's just a part of the game. As long as there are crushing hammers, as long as there are enhanced hammers, disruption will be a part of the game we play. However, in the current standard format, it I mean, disruption doesn't seem to be performing as well as it has in the past, and that makes me really happy. But that being said, there are still decks like... I believe, oh, I was talking to somebody in the TCG chat that we have for our channel, by the way, uh, if you are new to the channel, there is a Discord linked down in the description below. We have channels for not only the TCG, but Smogon and Draft Format as well, so feel free to check that out. But I was talking to somebody in the TCG channel, and they brought up something about Durant Mill. Now, I know that there's a Durant card, I'm pretty sure that it can mill, so I mean, clearly mill is something that is... Uh, well, not necessarily prevalent, but it is in the standard format, and so that would have to be the deck that I would consider the most scumbaggy. Any form of mill deck I consider to be scumbaggy. That being said, scumbaggy doesn't inherently mean that I'm saying players are bad for using it, and I want to make that very, very clear. No, At no point during this week am I saying that a player is bad for using a disruption deck. Disruption is a part of the game, a very prevalent part of the game and a very successful part of the game. I mean, there is a reason that Disruption decks have won multiple championships. It is because they are a very good and relevant archetype. It is just it's just something that I personally do not prefer playing. I'm not go I'm not saying anything negative about those that do play it. It's just something that I prefer personally prefer not to play. So, I mean, but in order to give them their due, uh, I guess their due exposure on the channel, I decided to relegate everything to one week. So, yeah, uh, sorry that took way too long, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about the deck. The deck that I chose for the standard format is going to be an item lock deck centered around Disconnect Luxio. Does 30 damage for a single energy, and hmm, where have I heard of a single, or not a single energy, of where have I heard of a 30 damage attack that locks your opponent out of item cards? That's, that's very, very interesting. Uh, it's a very original idea on Pokemon's part. But basically the whole deck is centered around locking your opponent out with Luxio. And yeah, that's pretty much what the deck is centered around. We are also using Luxray with Intimidating Fang in order to take hits better. And then Shining Celebi in order to reuse our attacks from when we were Luxio when we are using a Luxray. And then obviously Mew as well so that Buzzwall doesn't just run over us. So I mean it's a very straightforward deck, just the whole idea is to disrupt our opponent uh, with well, not allowing them to use item cards, chip them down with Luxio and Mew, just keep them from using item cards and hopefully stall them out long enough to where we can take the prizes to win the game. And in, some, in most cases, we'll be trying to bench them out just because uh, we're going to go off the fact that maybe they can't get set up as well as they would want to be due to the item lock. So yeah, I'm just going to go from go through the Pokemon from the beginning and just walk right on down. So we're running two Shining Celebi entirely for being able to use Disconnect with Luxray. Shining Celebi allows us with the time recall ability. Each of your evolved Pokemon can use any attack from its previous evolutions. And so this will allow us to have Luxray with the Intimidating Fang to take hits better while also being able to use 
disconnect from Luxio. So that's why we have a couple Celebi in there and only a couple just because, I mean, one Celebi is all you need at a time. And this deck has ways around uh, not around uh, attacking with only the Luxray line so that we don't necessarily need to have a super heavy line of Shining Celebi. Next up, we have 442 of Shinx, Luxio, and Luxray. One billion percent. You have to use four copies of this Shinx just because of the evolutionary advantage. If you go second, this Pokemon can evolve during your first turn. So basically, what this allows you to do is always be able to disconnect at the first opportunity you have to attack. If you go first, well, you get to evolve first and then you get to attack. But if you do go second, this Shinx allows you to evolve immediately into a Luxio and then disconnect immediately, which is basically the whole premise of this deck. The fewer turns you can give your opponent items, the better off you will be. So 4-4 four, four of that, and then 2 Luxray, just because, I mean, Luxray is awesome with Volt Bolt being able to, for 3 energy, hit for 150. Admittedly, you have to discard all the energy off of Luxray, so you want to be very sparing in how you use that. But otherwise, it works very well, just being able to disconnect repeatedly while taking 30 less damage due to Intimidating Fang, and then also having the Volt Bolt in order to be able to finish off uh, any, any like previously damaged EXs or GXs that your opponent happens to play down. Uh, next up, I'm actually skipping Cobaline for the time being, going right on to Mew. Mew is another way of working around, well, of having another way of using Disconnect. So obviously, Luxio is going to be weak to fighting, and that means if our opponent plays Buzzwool, then we just kind of lose because Buzzwool with a strong energy, we'll just be able to jet punch and one hit knock us out. And there's not a whole lot we can do because we can just be like, okay, 30 damage, we get knocked out. 30 more damage get knocked out again so I mean that's not a favorable trade so that is where Mew EX comes in with its versatile ability this Pokemon can use attacks of any Pokemon in play with the necessary energy of course so Mew being a psychic type will be able to hit Buzzwool for super effective damage and not get knocked out in one hit by Buzzwool so that is our way of playing around that and so we have three copies of Mew just because of how important it is to this deck and just not having an auto loss against Buzzwolves that I've actually been running into quite a bit. And then we have two Tapu Lele just to get set up as quickly and consistently as possible. And then the other Mons we are running, one copy of Kobolion and one copy of Keldeo. Now, both of these guys, you might be thinking, okay, wait, this is a lightning deck. How are we going to how are we going to use Kobolion or Keldeo? Well, these are for very specific matchups. Kobeline is for the Gardevoir matchup, being able to Revenge Blast, and then Keldeo is for the Volcanion uh, matchup, being able to Resolute Blade and uh, be able to knock them out. And those work wonderfully with Counter Energy if you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent, and this card is attached to a non-EX or GX. This card... Uh, Basically, it gives you two of every type of energy, so if you're down against a Gardevoir or a Volcanion and the situation is right, you can use Kobeline or Keldeo to just get a, just get a revenge one-shot when you have the counter energy on them just to be able to take out whatever big threat is in front of you. Now, it is worth noting that this does just... Uh, this does provide a single colorless energy, which is what we need to disconnect. So if you don't happen to have a lightning on hand, you can straight up just attach this to Luxio or Mew, and it works for you to be able to disconnect. So while Kobolion and Keldeo are there for specific matchups, counter energy works on all of the Pokemon that you would want to attack with. And I mean, I, admittedly, it only requires one energy for Lele, or it only gives one energy for Lele, but I mean, hey, that's still an energy. As for the items, two Enhanced Hammer just to get rid of DCEs that are pretty much everywhere in this metagame. One Field Blower, because, I mean, we really don't have to worry about our opponent playing too many items as we are going to disconnect them very, very quickly in this matchup. So Field Blower isn't necessarily needed to get rid of our opponent's items, but things like Garbodor, if our opponent happens to get a Float Stone up on them early, we can discard that and then lock them out so they don't have any more items. Three Max Potion, improve the longevity of Luxray and Mew, considering these guys can disconnect for only a single energy. Discarding with Max Potion is not that big of a deal. One Rescue Stretcher in order to recur our Pokemon, and then as for the search options, two four of Timer Ball and Ultra Ball. Now this is a line that I got from Aura Bomb, and it actually works out really well for me. I found that it's like 
I'm surprised at how well Timer Ball worked out in this deck, because normally my luck with Timer Ball has not been the best. However, for whatever reason, this deck, it just seems to work, so I just rolled with it, and then obviously four Ultra Ball, because it's Ultra Ball. Two, Parallel City as the stadium of choice, just to limit our opponent's bench size. They won't be able to play Field Blower if we continually uh, item lock them, so they will be limited to a bench of three for the whole game. And then as for these supporters, one, four, th one, four two of Sycamore N and Cynthia running a full amount of N just because our opponent is probably going to pull ahead before we can start taking prizes with Disconnect just because Disconnect, it only does 30 damage, 60 if you have a choice band against an EX or GX. So it's kind of a slow deck, but ending your opponent down while item locking them is insanely strong. So that's why we want the end. The N is as much for disruption as it is for shuffle draw. One Bridget, obviously, to get set up as quickly as we can with the setup that we want. And then three Guzma because, I mean, let's let's be real, it's Guzma. And then only one Sycamore because this deck really doesn't like discarding a whole lot. As for the tools, running three Choice Band and two Escape Board. Now, I'm trying out Escape Board because Orobomb says it's the new Float Stone, so... If it doesn't work out, I'm going to blame him, but for the time being, it's worked out thus far, so uh, yeah, thank you for pointing that out to me. Then three Choice Band to boost our damage output, four Counter Energy, just because, I mean, that's what makes this deck work, allows this deck to come back, and then six Regular Lightning for Volt Bolt, and then just attaching it to our Pokemon to be able to attack. So yeah, that is the standard Scumbag deck that I'm choosing. Let's go ahead and find some matches with it. Alrighty, we have found the first game of our scumbaggery, and it is going to be up against what looks like a Zoroark and Galisopod deck. I mean, if it's not, I will be kind of surprised, but uh, yeah, I mean, we do start off with something that we can actually, yeah, we can actually really work with this, because I'll be able to bridge it, I'll be able to end, I'll be able to get a Luxio, potentially two, depending on the situations, and we will even get a Mulligan card as well, so definitely will like to take advantage of that. I mean, we start with the Mew, which isn't the greatest. Actually, it's kind of awful in this matchup if it's what I'm predicting it to be, as it is one shot by Glycopod and Zorark, and it also uh, is like hits Zorark for resistance. So uh, yeah, that's not the best, but I even start with a Shinx too. So that's fantastic. And my opponent plays Eevee. So that's actually really interesting. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and get a... Do I just want two Luxio and a Celebi? I think that might actually be what I want. Or do I just want two, two uh, Shinx and a Shining Celebi? So I think I'm just going to go for two. Leave my, uh, leave my bench spots open for other stuff. Grab another Luxio with my timer ball and then just pass the turn right there. So, I mean, I could have gotten three Shinks out, but I think, I think the best option is to leave it open. Um, my opponent's playing Leafeon. What the heck? That's weird. So he is going to have to, uh, unfortunately, quick draw. Wow. He doesn't have anything at all. So I get the energy and because my opponent didn't have a hand is as much as I want to play the N, um, do I want to do that? Yeah, because my opponent didn't have anything, I think I'm just going to try to two-hit KO this Eevee as, I mean, either my opponent has the Leafeon in his hand or he just doesn't have it. Plays down the Wimpod, plays the energy onto the Tapu Koko, and then has to quick draw again, gets both heads. I mean, that's, honestly, quick draw should just be draw a card because that's, that's about what it, I mean, that's what it should be anyway. It shouldn't just be a flip a coin, but regardless, I do get an Ultra Ball, so what I'm going to do is grab a Tapu Lele. Wanted to save a spot for a Lele and then whatever else I might want to play down. So let's go ahead, grab that Lele, and then just grab a Cynthia so that I don't have to give my opponent a new hand, but at the same time, I do get a new hand myself. So hopefully I can get an energy on to Luxio or Luxray or something to that effect. And I even get the Enhanced Hammer too. So let's play that down onto the Luxray, play the Choice Band onto it, and then I think just disconnect them. Okay, so I'm saving my Enhanced Hammer. I could definitely get rid of the DCE off the Tapu Koko if I wanted to. Like, I, I really could just get rid of the DCE off of that. However, I kind of want to wait to try to play the DCE, or to get rid of the DCE off of the Zora, because, yes, Tapu Koko's annoying, 
but it's not inherently something that I have to deal with immediately. I'd much rather get rid of a DCE off of Zorak, as that's something capable of knocking out my uh, Mew or Luxio in one hit, or potentially doing major damage to my Luxray, even finishing off after Tapu Koko is able to flying flip for enough damage. So I want to save it. Unless I come to a situation where I'm just like, okay, I mean, I'm going to be getting rid of this anyway, so I just want to get rid of, so I just want to, so I might as well play it when, instead of just discarding it, so get use out of it. So my opponent is just going to fly and flip, that is fine, get some 20 damage. Um, I think I'm actually going to be able to hit this for uh, weakness, so I'm going to just go ahead and play that. Yes, I am Cynthia, Cynthia Ng. But, I mean, if I'm going to do that, I might as well just go ahead and wait. Let's Parallel City limit my opponent to those three bench spots. Keep him from being able to play Lele's or anything like that. Start powering up the Luxray even more. And then, let's just disconnect. Hit the Coco for 30 damage. What I could have done is retreated into Luxio or Luxray to be able to disconnect for uh, weakness. But, I mean, it forces my opponent to play down another DCE. And if I can get rid of all the DCEs off of the, like, through the Tapu Koko, like, already Tapu Koko has had half of his deck's DCEs committed to it. That's a win for me because Zorg is a much bigger threat than Koko. Yes, he can take out my Celebi. Yes, Celebi is something that can be taken out by the Tapu Koko, repeatedly flying, flipping, and Luxio can be put in range. Uh, Luxray can get put more in range of attacks from like Zork and Golisopod, that type of thing. And then Mew is going to be actually be worn down pretty quickly by flying flip, especially if my opponent gets a choice band. But regardless, like I said, Coco is much less of a threat than Zorark. And then also that he plays the other Golisopod as well means that the more DCEs that I can just force out of my opponent, the less I have to worry about them later. Uh, he is going to be able to trade, which fortunately for me, he's not able to play any of his items because I feel like he would definitely be doing more if he could play his items. And Celebi is starting to get low. So, um, how do I want to do this? So what I can do... I have the Guzma. Do I want to play that? So, yeah, I actually think I want to go ahead and Guzma. Let's bring up the Luxray. Let's start hitting this Zorark for more damage. Let's go ahead and disconnect for 60 damage. I mean, I might as well get that damage off while I can. Start wearing that thing down so that it's in range of Volt Bolt later if I need it. And I actually think it's in range of Volt Bolt now if that's what I decide to go for. So my opponent is locked out of items. He has to commit another DCE. So that'll be his third DCE. If he wants to either attack with Zork or get it out of the active, Parallel City will keep him from being able to KO my Luxray from here. And honestly, like, I'm in a great spot. Like, I'm in a very, very great spot. So I think, yeah, there's, there's the third DCE of the game, and my opponent does end me. That is fine. I'm still getting five cards. He's not going to be able to knock out my Shining Celebi at this point. And if he does, I will have another turn to be able to try to bring it back, that type of thing. So yeah, he is just going to uh, trade. He's going to be able to hit me for, I believe, 50 damage. But that's not going to be nearly enough for me to, for him to. Yeah, that's that's not nearly enough. Luxray is going to be able to Volt Bolt, and I actually am able to get rid of that third DCE as well, as I am going to be knocking out the Zorark this turn. So yeah, I mean, I'm Volt Bolting. I'm able to hit that thing for actually 180. I didn't even need. I didn't even need the choice band on that, but, I mean, taking out Zorark is always nice. I mean, he's three DCEs down. Like, he has to either commit a DCE. If he wants to flying flip and knock out my Celebi, that'll be his last DCE of the game. And, I, by the way, I am still hitting that Tapu Koko for weakness with Disconnect at this point, so I'll still be able to go for Disconnects. I can just retreat into my Luxio to be able to hit that thing. Like, I'm, I'm seriously in a perfect position to be able to win this game and if he commits his last dce and he's not able to special charge that type of thing i will pretty much just be in a situation where i win like just plain and simple i'm very far ahead at this point uh he can use items this turn but locking him out thus far has kept him from being able to get much of a setup at all and also getting rid of three DCEs at that point is huge, especially for that deck that appears to be so reliant on it. And yeah, my opponent does agree that I am very far ahead and just decides to concede the game at that point. So yeah, we do 
take the win. I mean, we were able to disrupt and hit for big damage when we needed to, so that was actually really a perfect showing of what this deck is supposed to do. So, uh, yeah, that was a pretty solid first game. Let's go ahead and try to find another one. Alrighty, we have found another one against Citizen Ray with a Dark and Psychic deck. So, uh, kind of curious to see what type of matchup we are going to be up against. Unfortunately, we're not running into Buzzwool right now, which is kind of the whole reason I run Mew in this deck. So Mew is pretty much being dead weight at this point. And I start off with a Shining Celebi. It's not the best, but I mean, hey, I guess it gets it in play. And then, I mean, I have a Bridget, I have energy, so I mean, I can't complain that I have a Lele to get a supporter for next turn. So again, I can't complain, but I, I'm just saying I could start off with some better stuff. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is, I know I can't play Bridget onto the bench, unfortunately. I'm just going to go ahead and bridge it for, you know what, I think I just want three Shinks as Mew really isn't going to be doing a whole lot in this game. So let's energy up this guy, escape board up the Celebi, and then I think just retreat into the Shinx as my opponent with the uh, Prism Darkrai active really isn't going to be doing a whole lot to my Shinx. Like, it has to have a bunch of energy in order to be able to attack. So unfortunately, we do see the SP or the, not the Espeon, the Eevee come down, get the energy attached to it. So it's going to be evolved into Umbreon. So Umbreon is something that I might be a little bit worried about. Ooh, he is going to be able to strafe immediately. So that's going to that's gonna hurt my Shinx. Uh, and then, is he going to be able to knock me out? Oh my gosh, he's going to be able to knock me out. Turn one, because, oh, that's, that's frustrating. That is really frustrating that my opponent was able to have all the perfect cards to knock out my Shinx turn one. So, I mean, that's not a good start at all. So, Shinx in an energy goes down, but what this does do is allow me to uh, energy up the Shinx on the bench and then Tapu Lele to grab a... Grab an N, because I mean, my opponent has five cards. I want him out of the five cards that he had. Maybe it's something better. Hopefully I can get him into something worse, as he did have a perfect turn one for the situation. And, well, I didn't draw into it, but at the very least, I get an Ultra Ball, so I will be able to get... So I will be able to draw into it myself. So yeah, let's go ahead and grab that Luxio. So I will be able to start disconnecting and this will hit the Umbreon for a very solid 60 damage and my opponent will be locked out of items. So hopefully at this point I will be able to, or I'll be able to just continue the item lock, get a Luxray going. That way I can reduce the damage that my opponent's able to do and then I can just make the item lock stick to where my opponent really will not be able to do much of anything. So plays it. He plays two Kakui. That is so weird. <laughs> it's so random. I mean, I, I can see teching one Kakui, but two is very, very unusual. Um, but regardless, I mean, I do draw into the max potion, which I'm 100% going to play now. There is. That's. I, I. Okay, if my opponent plays three Kakui, then okay, he got me. But let's go ahead and play the uh, Max Potion, heal off that energy, play the ener Counter Energy onto my Luxio, and then Tapu Lele for a Cynthia in order to be able to get a fresh hand of six. Hopefully get a Luxio and a Luxray or something like that. I mean, I get another Luxio, which works at the very least. I mean, at least this Luxio that's active isn't going to be going down. Uh, let's go ahead and disconnect, hit for another 60 damage. And really, really would prefer to have a Luxray so that I can reduce the damage done to me by the Umbreon. But, I mean, hey, I have two Luxio down. I should be should be in a pretty solid spot. My opponent is about to get another Umbreon, so we will be able to strafe back and forth, which is not something that I necessarily want to have to deal with. But if I can just keep hitting for 60 damage, eventually it will add up in my opponent will uh, have his Umbreon's get knocked out to where I will be in a potential position to win this game despite being down. So he does just strafe, hits me for 30 damage, no Kukui that turn, so I will not be knocked out, and finally I get a, finally I get an Ultra Ball. So let's go ahead and play that down onto the Luxio. Ultra Ball, get rid of, 
Okay, no, no, no. I have Wi-Fi. I know I have Wi-Fi. 100% have it, so let's Ultra Ball grab a Luxray so that I can finally get that sucker down so that my opponent will not be able to do any damage to me with Strafe because if I can just keep him from doing damage to me with Strafe, then hopefully I'll be able to uh, slowly accumulate enough damage to knock him out. So yeah, uh, we'll be able to just disconnect for another 60 damage. Meanwhile, Intimidating Fang is going to keep Strafe from doing any damage to me at all right now. And yeah, I think I'm in a solid spot. I'd really like to have another Shinx down. But, unfortunately, that thing got knocked out turn one, which was very, very sad for us. Uh, actually, kind of would ended up being better for us to go second, as we would have been able to evolve into a Luxio immediately. But, unfortunately, that's not how things work out. And my opponent is able to get a second energy on the Umbreon. Is he just going to go for a Dark Call? No, just strafes. I mean, that does no damage. And so, I'm just going to be sitting here. Uh, what I can do... Let's energy up the Luxray, and then I could Volt Bolt to knock out the Umbreon, but I think I just kind of want to keep keep disconnecting, keep my opponent from being able to do anything, because the more he attacks, the better position I will be in. And if he keeps attaching to this Umbreon, like he's not going to be able to two-hit KO me. Like this is going to do 60. And then the next one... Yeah, that actually might be enough. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that actually will be. So, have to be careful. Uh, let's field blower. Get rid of that float stone off my opponent's prism dark cry. I could... You know what? Don't... I think I'll volt bolt now. Okay, do I want to play the max potion and disconnect again, or do I want to volt bolt and just take out the Sumbreon? Because he has so much on it, because he dedicated three energy to it, I'm just going to go ahead and knock this thing out. Like, okay, in all honesty, like, that was kind of a waste of a turn, of a couple turns, or of one turn, as I should have just knocked him out last turn. And maybe kept him from attaching or something like that. But I wanted to force him to commit enough energy to that Umbreon in order to be able to Shadow Bullet. So, I mean, I, I wasted an energy on his turn, on his behalf, I wasted a uh, couple turns, or I wasted a turn on my side. But at the very least, now Luxray has no energy on it, I'm gonna be able to max potion up whatever he does, and then just continue to disconnect once again. So my opponent is gonna strafe again for zero damage. That's completely fine with me. I would like to get another Shinx, but unfortunately I don't have that. I I mean, I have the Luxios, I just don't have the Shinx. The Shinx is somewhere in my prizes. So let's max potion up the Luxray, play the energy onto it, evolve my Luxio, my other Luxio into a Luxray, and then I could attack, but I think I'm just going to keep disconnecting, put the Umbreon in range of being knocked out by another disconnect, and then I will also be able to, this way if he strifes or strafes out of the active, I can just Guzma that thing up and knock him out. So he's actually... Attaching more energy to the to the Umbreon, which is great for me. Because what that means is I will be able to slowly take that thing out. Well, I mean, well, once I take that thing out, I will be able to uh, take another couple prizes. I mean, to be fair, he does have the Wishful, wishful Baton. Which means he will be able to attach energy uh, that, Umbre that is on Umbreon to one of his bench Pokemon. And again, Strafe does nothing. That is great for me. Let's go ahead and... Uh, Choice Band up the Lele, as I can attack with that later if I need to. Parallel City, keep my opponent from playing anything, and then just N. I mean, I'm going to be down to two prizes. N is going to do absolutely nothing for me at this point, so I might as well get rid of that now. That way, it's just one less dead card. And then let's uh, go ahead and Timer Ball. It does absolutely nothing for me, as I have nothing that can evolve, but it just thins out my deck. So what I'm going to do is take the final knockout on my opponent's Umbreon with Disconnect. And uh, yeah, I mean, my opponent's going to be able to get some uh, energy onto the Darkrai to be able to hit for 120. But at the same time, I will be down to two prizes. I have the Guzma to get out of the Eternal Sleep. I also have the Free Retreat. And I finally get another Shinx that I will be able to work with. So I'm in a very, very good spot. Yes, Darkrai will be able to hit for a bunch of damage. But I think I should be okay. So yeah, he does just Abyssal Sleep, 
hits me for 90 damage. I do uh, go to sleep, and I actually end up waking up, which is perfectly fine with me, and I get another energy. So what I'm going to do is bring up the Eveltal, which I can just disconnect, unfortunately, three times in order to ha in order to knock it out. So I'll have to disconnect three times and to knock it out, but he does have to attach two energy to get that thing out of the active spot. So that's kind of what I'm going to force him to do while I continue to disconnect and hopefully put myself in a position where I can take more prizes. So let's go ahead and disconnect, put the evil tall uh, into range of not next turn, but the turn after that. And then hopefully I can end up, uh, hopefully I can end up winning the game. So he does, go ooh, good play, good play. He Guzmas up my Celebi and knocks that thing out. So this is where me getting greedy is going to come back to bite me. As I will not have a Celebi, I will not be able to disconnect this turn. So what I'm going to do... I actually don't have a draw supporter. So that really sucks. Uh, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and actually can't even attack either. So I do have to somehow draw into my Celebi. Or just some other way. Or just wait until next turn, get an energy onto my Shinx, that type of thing. So... Yeah, that was a very good play by my opponent. It actually puts me in a really bad spot. Like, that puts me in a really, really bad spot. I got way too greedy. I overextended. And, yeah, I guess I'm just going to go into Keldeo, let that thing take a hit, and then hopefully get an energy so that I can Volt Bolt my way out of this or disconnect my way out of this, that type of thing. So, yeah, I am just going to bring up Keldeo. My opponent's going to be able to knock it out. And this is where it's starting to get hairy. So I just had to play the waiting game of waiting until I'm able to draw into that Shining Celebi. Or that uh, Rescue Stretcher or an Energy just so I'm able to attack. So, yeah, that's that's what it's unfortunately coming down to at this point. And my opponent... Oh, please don't go AFK. We were having a very good game no, 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 please, please play something. Just knock out my Keldeo. I want to play this out. I want to see how this goes because this is actually turning into a really exciting game. Like, this this is a really intense game that I'm very glad I am a part of. Uh, so, yeah, Dark is going to be able to knock out the Keldeo. Uh, honestly, I just had to stall. I mean, luckily I have the free retreat to just be able to get out of there, but I, I, do, I do just have to stall. Like, that's really all I can do at this point. Just wait until I'm able to top deck into what will allow me to what will allow me to get out of it so unfortunately my opponent is clearly afk so uh i don't draw into anything so i am just going to pass the turn let it go back to him and if he doesn't play anything in this coming turn i'm probably just gonna pause it until i'm able to uh pull out the game and until i'm able to finish off the game take those last two prizes and go from there so uh yeah it doesn't look my like my opponent's doing anything so i mean yeah i mean i hate i hate that that's how it's how it's gonna end but unfortunately that's unfortunately that seems like that's gonna happen so yeah i'm just gonna pause it until the end of the game so unfortunately, like my opponent, my internet did not want to finish this battle either and kicked me out, which is a clear sign that I should probably end the video there. So uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of a, an appropriate ending to the first installment of Scumbag Week. Hope you guys enjoyed, well, as much as you could anyway. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And this is Sticks signing out. Why not? See you guys.